So I guess I'd like to start uh, by asking you a little bit about what brought you into this industry, because I know you did not start off here. You were in the advertising space, and you made a uh, career transition into filmmaking. Yes. Can you comment a little bit on uh, what drove that transition from advertising to filmmaking? Uh, well, it was like flowing with the water, and nothing was pre-decided. So uh, I can't claim that it was movies for me all the way. So I just went along from one profession to another and till you find your calling and I guess uh, cinema was it. And having discovered cinema and still discovering it, it kind of gave me a lot of happiness and satisfaction. In a way I could also express myself and being able to express through the medium much more which I couldn't have done anywhere else. Yeah. It's interesting because I, I would have thought you could have done these in advertising as well, express yourself through the medium. You did not feel that way? Uh, I, I had a lot of fun in advertising. Uh, in fact, uh, I started with producing commercials, then I started directing them. Yeah. And um, a lot happened when MTV moved into India. They gave me the task of uh, Indianizing MTV. Yeah. So that was great fun. And um, then doing the first commercials with uh, uh, Amitabh Bachchan. And at that point of time, the, there were only models and not cinema personalities and celebrities were not common. Yeah. So all those things happened. At the same time, there was a huge uh, uh, technological kind of a breakthrough in advertising. So one was part of it. and traveling with your first commercials overseas and post-producing post and editing them. Mm -hmm. A lot of international commercials came away because India was also kind of blooming economically. Yeah. So all the automobile industries and all, all the Japanese cars were coming into India, so we started shooting for them. So yes, I did have a lot of fun, but what we need to understand is in advertising, you're always... Uh, working uh, under a given brief. Your primary job uh, is to sell. Yeah. And uh, there is uh, very limited expression there. Fair enough. Technically, yes, you can express yourself. Yeah, fair enough. That makes sense. Now, in terms of your uh, movie making, let's talk a little bit about your films. Uh, your second film, Rang De Basanti, was a phenomenal success, if I'm not mistaken, among the top three highest grossing mo Hindi films ever. Can you comment a little bit on what, in your mind, were some of the factors that led, it to, it, led, that led to its uh, phenomenal success? Uh, actually, uh, when I was conceiving the film and, and, and making it, and even during the release, uh, one could have never thought that this film is going to uh, shape up the way it has. And it became more than a movie. It just went on to kind of occupy the subconscious of the nation. Yeah. Uh, essentially, now, when I look back, there are millions of reasons for the success of the film. And uh, so for the failure of any film, yeah. you can, uh, on retrospect, you can always analyze but once you're going with it, then you're going with it. And you're going with your instincts, your, uh, the small voice inside you, which is the loudest. And uh, that kind of drove me uh, into writing the script and then taking it forward, producing and directing the film. I guess uh, the things you can do justice to and the subjects you can do justice to are when you're really dying to say something, you're dying to express yourself, and then you're drawing out of your own real life. So you're not, uh, the, the idiom is there to borrow, but the soul somewhere kind of originates from your childhood, your youth, your school, your college, your profession, and what you've seen in life, and what you imbibe, imbibe from life, and learned from life, and then you give it back. Okay. So you mentioned there were a million reasons why it was successful. There, there could have been a million reasons why it could have failed. 
So on that note, I want to step back and look at the industry and the business of cinema. It's a hit-driven business. Uh, most of the profits in the industry are concentrated among a few movies that are released every year. And uh, certainly the success of movies are, is highly unpredictable uh, in advance. And a lot of us folks at Wharton study these kinds of uh, hit-driven businesses, be it movies, music, uh, startups, venture capital, product releases, and so on. And we're always trying to understand what is it that contributes to the success of these uh, items in these hit-driven businesses, and can you predict that in advance? In your mind, are there best practices to filmmaking? There are certain things that you think are, are crucial to making something successful, or is it always that you go into a movie and you make the movie and it's, it's a hit or a miss when you, when you release the movie and you have no clue what's going to happen? No, there are various factors and um, by which uh, you can always take the path of a successful film. Okay. Uh, obviously, you really can't predict that what will be the, the quantum of success. Right. As, essentially, we all work within a glass ceiling, so uh, to break through above that is where the challenge is. And to raise the bar is where the challenge lies. And to kind of be a game changer in your own game is where uh, the fun is. Um, I would say uh, one has to start with the scripting process. Okay. It's the writing, the content, okay. which, uh, which kind of defines. Uh, uh, you can have a very good, you can have a good script and, and then you can make a not such a good movie, but yet it will be successful. But to start with, if you don't have a good screenplay and you don't have a good story to tell, right. You can get the best artists, the best cast, the best technicians behind the camera, but it will not reach out to the audience. So I, I think the, if, if there was one ingredient, it would be the content and the writing. It's interesting that you bring up the script and the story as the key ingredient, uh, and I completely agree with you. But one of the interesting contradictions I notice is that when we look at uh, the Hollywood uh, industry, if you look at the budget break breakdown, close to 10, sometimes 12, 15% of the budget is spent on development, the story, script, and so on. When I look at the Indian film industry, the development portion of the budget is sometimes as low as 1%, 1.5%. Do you think that the industry is really under-investing in development, and is there a significant inefficiency here that needs to be addressed? Oh, absolutely. I completely, I can't agree with you more than um, more than this, uh, I, I think we need to pay a lot of emphasis in in the development budgets of, and not necessarily the film you are going to make, because when we talk about development, it's uh, it can be laterally correlated to uh, the research and development in any other industry. So while you are researching many models of cars. It's just that one car which comes in front and right. all that money which you spent and invested into development need not necessarily uh, convert itself into the finished product. So yes, uh, um, you're so right when you say that we should invest more and more into developing content and out of that content then you'll find something which you can take forward and put it on the assembly line. Right. So I'm seeing some parallels with other industries where there are firms focused very heavily on research and development. They often come out with products and they make most of their money through licensing. Uh, Qualcomm in the US is a technology company that fits that bill. I'm curious to get your perspective on whether there is an opportunity for a purely development focused firm in India that, whose job is to produce stories and scripts and license it. Or do you feel that that's not really the way the industry works and there isn't such an opportunity? Uh, I, yes and no. Okay. Um, since no one has tried it, we don't know the answer once you try and, and then you have your own learning curve. Okay. But uh, I would say it's more like a 360, uh, more than just having a specialized kind of a script development uh, because there's a, there's a lot of normal and abnormal wastage there. There are a lot of ideas which... Uh, kind of you, uh, you reach the roadblock yeah. after halfway or almost about completion. And even when you complete it, you feel that 
no, this is was a great idea, but it hasn't translated itself onto a screenplay. Yeah. So uh, it's it's I have always felt it better that if a part of your overall budget and 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 your overall finances can be put towards content development. Yeah. So if you're a studio house or you're a production house, uh, then you can invest in that part, and out of there then. Take uh, take content and take finish uh, screenplays and put them forward, rather than starting a specialized kind of a uh, house there. Okay, interesting. Now I guess switching gears a little bit, I want to talk a little bit about all the recent technological innovations in uh, filmmaking, starting with digital production. The co- it has brought down the cost of filmmaking considerably. Digital distribution is also something that uh, is a little newer in India, but uh, there's new companies like UFO Cinemas and others coming in that are offering digital distribution, which enables a movie to be simultaneously released to multiple markets. Yeah, in your opinion, what kind of impact would these have on filmmaking and the industry in general? And my understanding is the adoption of these technologies, be it in production or distribution, is is still fairly limited. Is that accurate, or do you? See, uh, and if so, why is it so limited? Uh, we've been hearing digital uh, for the last 15 years. It's it's not uh, that it's just sprung up. Okay, but and but do you produce in analog film reels, or do you do digital production for most of your films? Uh, these days, um, most of the films are made analog and right. then converted into. Right. Uh, At the digital. time of editing, you would convert yeah, it, it to it digital. it goes into digital, and the final product is a digital kind of a negative, which further is burnt into an analog or a digital kind of a, a wire medium to project the film. Right. So uh, the process you follow, you're saying, is it's primarily these days produce in analog with regular uh, film correct, rolls, yeah. convert into digital. You might yeah. edit in digital, yeah. reconvert it back to analog, and distribute it in analog. Distribute in analog and distribute in digital, as both well. ways, as okay. well. And uh, in in India today, the digital prints are almost uh, uh, gaining momentum. They're almost 50 percent of your analog prints. So oh, digitally, really? India is really. Uh, really taken the leap as such in terms of projection, in terms of actual shooting, uh, utilization of digital cameras, like new cameras like RED or yeah. uh, the Genesis from right. Panavision and stuff like that. It's, it still uh, does not give you the same results as film, uh, not only in India, but worldwide. If, if you see the movies produced in Hollywood also, yeah. essentially the movies which will go digital are either indie films, yeah. so they are low budget and they need to be done under under monetary constraints, and also they have to be faster. The crew has to be more gorilla, and it it's it's, it's given new filmmakers a lot of uh, elbow room to play around with. All the films which are driven by visual effects. So if you're doing a Superman, or um, then it makes a lot of sense because already a lot of film will be composited later on digitally. So you, your your medium is kind of uniform all the way through, because there are questions of conversion from analog to digital and digital to analog and so on and so forth. But film does give you a certain depth. I guess one other question related to the industry. Uh, that I would uh, want to get your uh, feedback and perspective on relates to this uh, outsider's perspective of the movie industry as being heavily relationship-based, that one really needs to be in that industry to uh, to participate in that industry, and that it's very hard for newcomers to come in. Now, I don't know whether you view yourself as a, as an, a newcomer who entered in the space or because you were in advertising, you already had many of the relationships. But what's your perspective on how uh, open the industry is to new entrants? And is this an industry where uh, people with new and creative ideas can easily enter and, and sort of bring about new innovation? Um, true and false. <laughs> <laughs> it, uh, yes, uh, it, it, it was a very closely held industry, right. I would say, five years ago and the years uh, before that. 
uh, say a good 20, 25 years before that. I don't know the history before that. Uh, it, it, it was an industry which was clannish, which was uh, kind of relation-based, as you're saying, and it, it was difficult to break through into it. And even if you were breaking through, you were doing parallel cinema, art cinema, so on and so forth. But today, uh, it's completely changed altogether, and it's changing rapidly by the hour. I, I think the one, if, if one were to attribute that one reason why it's no more uh, such a cottage industry anymore, mm. and it's, it's more open, and um, the playing field is, uh, is, is, is much more, it's a level playing ground now for everybody who enters, is because the finance has become structured. Today, movies, uh, corporates have moved in, Movies are being made with public money. And uh, when the size of the business grows and, and, and the finance kind of becomes structured, it comes through institutions and banking institutions. And, uh, and obviously, uh, uh, the, the companies are also being listed in the share market. Then the, the whole game changes. The, it's, it's a different game you're talking about. It's uh, when... when People who understand the business of film, mm -hmm. they they are they emotionally they are not attached with relationships. They're more attached with the results, how the film is going to be monetized, how it's going to be marketed and distributed. What kind of product are we raising the bar? Is the content changing? So all those things come into play uh, tremendously. Uh, new and new talent is born every day. As we talk, there are new actors, there are new directors, there are new um, uh, kind of writers coming into the scene, the breakthrough kind of subjects which are happening. Not at the same momentum as one would like to see, mm. but yes, uh, the beginning is already there. Okay. You talked about the corporates entering in and that financing has fundamentally changed. Now, over the last seven or maybe even ten years, a lot of the money the financing in uh, in the Indian film industry has, has has been coming from multinationals, including investors in the U.S. and Wall Street and so on. Yes, sir. Has that dried up now, given the recession in the U.S. and the f impact on the financial services industry in the U.S.? Uh, not really. Uh, when it all began, there was a, the film funds are from the U.S. and from the West, and uh, mostly. But now um, things have changed as... Uh, India is in itself is a consumer market, and we consume a, a most of what we produce ourselves, almost 80 to 90 percent. So even even the money is now generating from within the country, and uh, you're, we are finding Indian institutions like IDBI and and the Indian banks, and uh, they are all looking at financing movies as such, and it's with completion bonds coming and insurance coming into play, mm -hmm. uh, they're a lot more secure as okay. such. And even the distribution houses and even the studios now entering Indian distribution, the, the American studios, the big five are right. in there now. So it's, you, you're almost able to underwrite your film against distribution. Mm. So it's, it's, uh, it's a lot more healthy, I would say, uh, with the flow of funds being uh, more organized. As I observe the industry and its transitions over the last uh, uh, couple of decades, it seems like there have been a lot of changes in the industry, even in the last six, seven years. In your mind, what has been the most important or interesting innovation in the industry as a whole? Be it technological, like the digital uh, technologies we mentioned, or be it the way films get made in terms of relationships, or uh, in, or be it financing or uh, anything else in terms of the way it's exhibited. In your mind, what is the most important innovation for the industry in the last 10 years? Uh, I, I, I think the, there have been two key changes as such. The industry was driven by a star system hmm. around five years ago. I think that system has broken. The whole star system has fallen. Mm. 
So earlier you would find a star actor kind of uh, doing many projects at the same time. There were instances when actors were, had signed up to 10 to 12 films mm. and their 10 films were on the floor. Mm. So as a result, all of them used to suffer because the time was limited. Yeah. But now uh, uh, better contracts and healthy contracts have come in. So one actor is doing uh, one film at a time. One technical crew gets into a movie, finishes it, gets out and gets into another production. Yeah. So it's all uh, very well planned. So breaking of the star system yeah. has been instrumental uh, towards better cinema. That has also happened. The other key thing is the clean finance mm. which has come into the business. Mm. And the management of the finance is with people who understand money. Yeah. So it's not just an unorganized way of giving money at high interest rate. You can actually plan for the entire budget and then you can uh, plan your cash flow as for the milestones the film achieves, uh, achieves at various stages. So whether it's development, scripting, pre-production, actual production and shooting of the film, post-production and then uh, the marketing and selling of it. So at every stage the quantum of finance can move in. So you don't need the entire money at the same time. And because the money is assured, and it is not some money lender who's uh, uh, a Sindhi or a Jewish money lender who's going to give you money, so everything is structured, and um, uh, there is kind of a timeline to your cash flows, inflows and outflows. So that has brought about a paradigm change in the whole industry, in the way uh, we are thinking the projects, in the way they have been implemented, in the way the content is now shaping up. So. Uh, all that is a very healthy sign, I must say. So Rakesh, there's been a lot of controversy lately about intellectual property issues in the industry. Are, are rights are properly attributed? Are, are people given their due, due credit? What's your perspective on this? Is the industry doing enough in terms of uh, managing IP carefully, in terms of uh, paying for uh, rights and, and attributing it? Uh, when it's needed? Uh, yeah, I, there, there has been a lot of uh, cloud over the subject of intellectual property as right. such. Uh, the fact is, uh, first we have to understand what is IP, how do we separate it from royalty, and how do we uh, separate it from publishing right. So, uh, uh, when you create something, you, you create an intellectual property and then it is monetized. So uh, for a long time, the money was being confused with uh, IP. Right. And uh, IP is unique. It's something to what you create. It's something which is original. Money is not unique. Uh, money is a common commodity. So that confusion needs to be sorted out. So that is definitely there. As we are talking, uh, the government of India is going to table a bill and uh, in the parliament, in this session very much, mm. uh, wherein the writers, the directors, uh, the composers, the, the music directors and the lyricists will have a copyright. But then again, there's some ambiguity about it because there should be more, copyright is, is a part of a, a contractual engagement. Yeah. You can discuss it over the table. And, and you can let go of or assign your copyright uh, for a sum of money. So it uh, essentially is evolving. Uh, clarity will emerge um, as we go along. Uh, it's, it's a step in the right direction though. And uh, we ourselves have taken the initiative. Uh, I've uh, myself almost uh, uh, written 700 letters to the ministry, to the home minister, to the law minister, to the prime minister's office. Oh, really? Uh, got, gotten in all the organizations together. So my take in this is that cinema is a new medium, is a new art form, and it's a collaborative art form. Unlike fine arts, uh, uh, where you compose a song for, uh, or an individual art, this is collaborative. So while 
writer writes a story the director uh, kind of uh, partners with him and um, takes it to a producer and the producer then would undertake the entire risk of uh, making the movie and then uh, walks in the cinematographers the choreographers the action directors the editors and so on and so forth and various departments so i think everybody should be a part of a royalty uh, the percentage of royalty will depend on um, your market viability your standing your past record and 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 the project in the offering so all this will evolve but uh, i i think it's a good idea to uh, have some kind of a point system where you can share your royalty in perpetuity mm. and uh, this will bring in um a lot of transparency into everything but a lot of other questions have to be answered uh, the monetization of the film and um how do we understand what was the actual monetization and how did the money flow only then once you know once you can account that money so all that which also in terms will reflect how how the exhibition works how the money comes back to the producer whether escrow accounts can be open and banks can be instructed to pay people uh, lifelong uh, we can learn uh, from uh, from from uh, from the us as to how they have implemented things we can also learn from the mistakes of the west uh, that's the beauty of it where the system has failed and they were evolve our own indianized system towards the the sharing of ip and and royalty i would say all right great thanks so much for taking the time um, my pleasure absolutely thanks for having me over